All right. Uh, hello and welcome. Uh, this is Doyle Bueller, and uh, this is my uh, Facebook Live on uh, digital leadership. And today I've got an amazing guest uh, who's uh, sitting in my little window over there, <laughs> uh, Rivers Corbett, who I'll bring in, be bringing uh, online and on stream. Uh, get into it, and, and um, yeah, and so he's joining us actually from New Brunswick and uh, which is Atlantic Canada, Eastern Canada and uh, we'll get going with him right away and just a quick introduction uh, so I wanted to welcome you to my digital leadership Facebook live series uh, as I mentioned my goal here is to help you better understand and pursue what matters most in your digital business and how to make a difference with your digital strategy through enhancing your and embracing your digital leadership I help on enterprise and entrepreneurs scale, grow, and disrupt their business and sales through digital leadership, and I'm the author of the book uh, on digital strategy, The Digital Delusion. Uh, the overall purpose of these is to answer the one important question, you know, what real-world digital strategies uh, will actually work for my business? And uh, as I mentioned in today's show, I'm talking with legendary entrepreneur uh, Rivers Corbett, and I want to see what entrepreneurship means in startups. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff uh, from there. So uh, welcome to the program, Rivers. Yeah, thanks, Doyle, very much. And let's do it. I want to give a big shout out to you right away, uh, to your audience. Uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I've just recently uh, engaged Doyle uh, in an extensive research for the type of person I want to partner with me to take my strategy to the next level. We've known each other be well before then, by the way. So I wanted this is not a paid advertisement, uh, very <laughs> much so. I want to endorse that. Uh, good for you to listen in on Doyle. He, the guy knows what he's doing. He's the top of the top. And so uh, wow. congratulations, Doyle, for doing what you're doing, dude. <laughs> oh, thanks. I really appreciate it. Or like the um, uh, want to push that entrepreneurship as well. That's been your major focus since I've known you, right? Like, yes, so sir. what you're doing. Yeah, so I really play two paths with my, uh, I've been an entrepreneur for 20, 22 years. Uh, really, it's my DNA. It's why I'm here yeah. on earth and uh, I love what it is that I do. I'm just so blessed to have that opportunity to to exceed in business and fail at business at the same time because it's uh, it's one of those things that you, you, all right, I just fell down. I'll get back up and do it again. And I, I love what I do and I have great independence and value associated with that. But on the other side, I'm, a, I'm very much an advocate for the, the journey of the entrepreneur very much an advocate for celebrating entrepreneurship and very much an advocate for appreciating that. Really, for me, entrepreneurs, uh, uh, besides moms, are the most important people in society because when you think about what it is that we do as, uh, as, a, as a society, North American anyway, it's all based around economics. And so without the entrepreneur driving that forward, we just can't have doctors, teachers, transportation workers, sewage workers, and so on. So, uh, and, so that's really, government too. Yeah, that's right, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. For, yeah, well, maybe I'll stop being an entrepreneur now. Um, but the, uh, the thing is, is that, yeah, my passion has really been to enable that, uh, that journey, uh, and move it forward and working with organizations like Startup Canada, which is the permanent uh, um, organi organization in the planet, actually, leading nationally uh, the, the empowerment of, of entrepreneurship. Um, I'm, at, uh, I'm at the economic agency of our province as their entrepreneur in residence doing that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, and I'm just, I'm living a great journey in that space. And, uh, now I'm actually pivoting a bit more to working more with entrepreneurs, uh, rather than being one, working with, with them to empower them as using my experience and my network and connections and, and knowledge and so on. So yes, yeah, it's, it's just wonderful to be where I'm at. Thank you for the question. Yeah, no, it's, it's yeah, yeah, no, it's a, it's a fantastic. And I know we've talked about, um, yeah, I love and how you're doing in the startup uh, at scale and well. And so what are some of the pieces that you feel are really needed in the startup ecosystem to kind of, this is out there, get their success. What do we really need? Yeah, it's a great question. And uh, by the way, one other thing I want to make a plug for uh, is the Startup Canada podcast where we get to chat too in there. And I think that's it. We're doing some movers and shakers there. Um, the answer to the question is uh, really simple, actually. Uh, what do we really need is we need entrepreneurs who are understanding that before they begin their journey of entrepreneurship, and this is why I think most fail, is they jump into the pool, they jump into the water, they jump into the race, they jump into the game with 
throat really validating, first of all, that there's a need for what it is that they want to offer to the marketplace by, uh, by doing the appropriate research, by doing the appropriate customer engagement pre-purchase, and, uh, and then move it forward from there. Where I see most organizations going is that, you know, I need $100,000 to produce this thing, which I haven't done any testing on, but hey, I need 100000 You know, they get 100000 and uh, by mortgaging in their houses, they're, they're doing everything with regards to loans. And then they end up uh, failing because they haven't done that appropriate, I call it laboratory process with their business from the beginning. So I think it's a mindset that, that we need to change. First of all, it's not about funding. It's about validation of an idea with a customer base that not only likes what it is that you do, but is willing to pay for what it is that you do. I could very easily just love what it is you do and say, yeah, yeah, Doyle, I'll buy from you. But I just sent you money the other day. Now that's validation right there. And we need to have more of that in order to uh, in order to start, but also to continue to scale. And on that note, on the scaling part of it, is that you need to constantly be validating. It isn't just doing it once or twice. It's in a constant process of further validating your product or service to the customer market that is paying you and and more so to the customer market that is paying you a significant amount of money for your business where so you can have a great profit. Um, and if I could just keep talking on, on that piece, that's the other thing I see a lot of companies do these days. They, they, they create to sell and they're really not companies. They're just, they're just red holes of losing money. And right. uh, where I think where businesses need to be focused in on is profitability, not just revenue. Yeah. And, and that brings up a good point that sort of brought this show together. It's like, do you actually need, well, what's more important sort of that intellectual property, not in sort of the legal sense or the monetary value that, you know, cause most startups, they, they typically come and it's like, Oh, well let's raise, you know, a hundred grand. That's mm -hmm. kind of what you're talking about before, but not at that stage or should they be doing other things to kind of help them get to that stage so that they know how to spend the hundred grand once they do get there. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Well, again, it's, it's, I'm a firm believer that the, uh, you know, the startup stage at any stage, really, you're, you're still in a laboratory. And so laboratory is all about test, test, test. <laughs> you're an advocate of that again. Right. Um, and so I'm all about Yeah. It's great to have the IP, uh, but if nobody wants to buy the IP, then really all you do is have uh, an expensive IP. And so the, you know, when I work with entrepreneurs, my, 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 uh, teaching with them is all about my job is to get you to first base and I get you to first base by teaching you the rules of the business, of, of business, first of all, and then teaching you how to play. And you first learn how to play by getting the first base, not about grand slams. Let's get you on base first and yeah. uh, figure out it that way. And so again, where everybody's looking for that grand slam, well, in a game of baseball, the, team that wins is the most is the one that gets the first base most it's not the one that has the most grand slams <laughs> once you're past like is that a lot expecting right and it's like whoa 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 hang on yeah that's right this is wall around yeah 11 years to even from a strategic perspective and perspective, like going back 11 years, like their interface was sort of, you know, it was something to get them going. And, and I think right. that that's what a lot of businesses miss is, is, yeah, not being able to realize that, hey, we don't have to be at, you know, business 10.0. We can start a business 1.0. Yeah. So. Yeah, I remember talking to, or not talking to, but I was listening. I think it was Guy Kawasaki. And that's what he says, go with 1.0. Yeah, so okay. Get, just get in the game. <laughs> and again, using the baseball analogy, it's, you know, the, the major league pitchers start on, you know, the backyard. That's where they start. That's where they start to play and learn yeah. and fine tune and so on. And, and so, yeah, it's this rush, rush game. And you hear the old thing. Yeah, it's, a, a toy, it's, a, it's an overnight success that took 25 years. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Cool. So, um, what's the uh, entrepreneur ecosystem like? The startup 
um, scale up in in New Brunswick where you're at and in, in the rest of Canada for that matter from what you've been able to experience? Yeah, you know, it's I'll first say in New Brunswick. New Brunswick is a population, folks, of 750,000 people. and It's not even the size of the city of Toronto. But what's happening in New Brunswick is very unique across the country. And that's not only are we seeing a uh, an increase in the activities of entrepreneurship, but we're also seeing a significant increase in the spirit of entrepreneurship. And that in- excludes the entrepreneurs itself. That includes the communities, which we are now participating in helping them to develop this, this startup, uh, I'll call it the brand uh, spirit, so that not only the entrepreneurs getting what they need, but the people who are supporting them understand what they need. But the, you know, the moms and dads that are sitting at the tables now understand when government is making policy as to why it's happening. So there's a spirit of support. It's like having a home team and you want to support them no matter how well they're doing. And so there's not only actions of entrepreneurship that is happening really significantly, but the spirit of entrepreneurship is happening. And that's just come from a fact that we got to become independent not dependent. And again, for your listeners, you know, in our in our country, uh, my region, there's a lot of what they call transfer payments coming from government year after year. And it just, you know, after a while, that formula doesn't work, particularly if the richer provinces are the ones that are that are paying the bills all of a sudden become the poorer province, you know, you the, the coffers run out. And so, so I'm really excited about that because it's a pivotal time in our history where we're really starting to take ownership of, of our own destiny. And I think you're seeing that across the country now, actually, um, you know, with the recent oil plunge and so on, you know, the richest province in our country, uh, Alberta, just, you know, they've never had a provincial tax uh, um, um, a system in place. Well, they now have that in place because they're not able to get the revenues they originally had over the uh, over the oil over the over the the oil uh, uh, sales. And I don't say that to say that's a great strategy to happen. What I'm saying is that changes are happening, and entrepreneurship is now not becoming the dirty word; it's becoming the sexy word, and it's surrounded by let's let's go ahead and do it. So that's all good. The challenge is how do you properly support those entrepreneurs as we go forward? And, you know, that's that's a game in itself, which everybody's trying to figure out um, through uh, survival and then thriving. I got to move upstairs. I'm losing you again. (laughs) You're smiling. (laughs) I can't hear you, dude. Yeah, I think we lost our connection, Doyle, from a a vocal perspective. How's that? There, yeah, you know? there's be- yeah, there's better. I'm back. You're back again. Thank you. Oh, lost. Um, but I was there thinking we could talk about politics forever. Yeah. Um, because I'm originally from from Western Canada. From Cal. Yes. Um, what is the instigator and, and sort of what can you do to kind of continue that growth ship? Uh, how are you finding is uh, putting in place like work? Um, sorry, can you say that something put in place what work? Uh, a mastermind. Mind. Oh yeah, great. You had a mastermind going. Yeah, well, I appreciate you saying that. And give me a thumbs up if if you stop hearing me. I'm getting you bits and pieces, but I got your question. Um, you know, I, yeah, I, I, I'm all about helping the masses. And what you know, I see a lot with with traditional coaching 
patterns is that uh, is really, you know, where the opportunity for the coaches is the one-on-one, -on -one. but unfortunately it's very limited based on the 24 seven model. And so uh, I fortunately have found a platform uh, that I'm going to be now be able to bring together 31 uh, select entrepreneurs. And by the way, these are not just because they happen to be rich. It's all about attitude with me. It's all about people that want to do epic things and very much at that beginning stage, but we're coming together with collective money mindsets. Uh, I'm going to facilitate the, uh, the, uh, the, the mastermind by bringing together education, by bringing together accountability, by bringing together connection within the network itself. But I'm going to be able to, on top of that, bring one-on-one -on -one coaching in a, a systematic way that people still get the value of the one-on-one -on -one coaching with all these other things. And yeah. on top of that, it's a cheap entry point. Instead of spending $2,000, $3,000 a month for a coach, this is like, uh, you know, $200 uh, a, a month um, because I'm able to uh, to efficiently and effectively be able to coach uh, multiple people at a time. So they're still getting the same value. It's just done through this, this systematic approach to, uh, to yeah. coaching. So. so you find that that's kind of the one of the gaps is that businesses kind of are not sure where to go, especially obviously in the startup stage, mm. um, what to do next. And they don't mm. really have a, a strong community. Is that fair to say? It's fair to say. Um, so my first belief is that, again, it's, it's easy to get into business. It's difficult to be successful in business. And so my my uh, reference point is, is that um, is that these these folks, uh, again, they're getting involved with a game that they don't know the rules and have never been coached how to properly play it. I mean, Tom Brady's had a coach his entire career. So that should be a sign that even the top of the top still need coaches. So yeah. I bring together, I bring together that element of teaching the rules and, and helping you play the game as it relates to your business, but bringing in this group component because now not only you just have Rivers Corbett in the process, but now you have 30 other members of your community who are focused in on your success and helping you with your success. So for example, I don't have the digital expertise that you have. So if you're a part of my mastermind, then all of a sudden the group has access to this amazing digital strategist. This is one of the best in the world. And so that's where the mastermind component comes in is sharing best right. practices, best ideas, but still getting those individual that individual attention that you need. And uh, at a cost point, and that's again why most people don't get coaches because they're trying to play salaries that are trying to pay for the rent and they forget about the fact they need that expertise. So the price point is really affordable now to still get that high level uh, coaching, uh, yeah. high level integration. Well, it's interesting that most most entrepreneurs think that they can kind of do it themselves, right? Crazy. Yeah. But why is that? <laughs> well, it's because it's because because here's the fundamental reason why is it's kind of like reminds me of the book, the E-Myth Revisited, and it's all about technicians. Most people are very good at something. And so they figure because they're good at something, they, you know, somebody said, oh, you should go into business. Like you should go into business. You're a great baker. Oh, you should go into business by yourself. Oh, you're a great, you know, you're uh, you're a great um, a graphic designer. You should go into business. Well, it's beyond the technician side. You really have to understand that being a technician is one of one hundredths of the formula of success in order to run a business. But that's why people get started because they say, I'm tired of working for somebody else as a technician. I can do this myself when in reality they, they can't because they don't have don't know the fundamentals of playing the game. Yeah, they, they have the technical skill, but not the business skill. Right. And I guess that's what I, that's what you're saying this gap is. So, you know, um, you need that help. Uh, you need to sort of have that extra support network in place yes. while you're starting and while you're growing. Otherwise, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, think about it. Think about it, Doyle. I mean, it's, 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 I usually like, I love using a lot of life analogies. When you're born, yeah, you're born a human, but you still need your parents to help you grow up a bit. And it's yeah, true. Thing. Yeah, you're born a technician. You've got a technician, but you still need help for people that have been there in order to move it forward in the way you are. And that's what the rock star mastermind does is give you the help you need in a very effective way, connecting you. And this is the benefit of it, connecting you with other other epic entrepreneurs like you where you're a community now all focused in on each other and uh, at a cost point that is really peanuts 
when you get right down yeah. to it. And that makes me happy where you can connect with, a, with 30 people versus three over the same time period. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a, it's a really cool model. And, um, businesses understand that yes, they need that help and yes, they need sort of that connection uh, point as well to get those extra skills that we don't have. Like, yeah, starting right. a business, the idea is one thing, but the ex and you might have the skills to kind of get the idea and create some of it, but execution and that sort of thing takes a total different uh, yeah. set of skills. So, yeah, it totally does. I mean, again, I'm, I use the comparison of the the Tom Brady. I'm a big Patriots fan, so I always talk about yeah. like, Tom Brady doesn't catch the ball. You know, he doesn't yeah. tackle. He throws yeah. the ball. He's one part of the team. So you need the tackle. You need the tight end. You need the coach to ultimately bring together your team. And that's what a mastermind does is bring in those other parts of your team yeah. that you don't – one, you don't have. Two, you're no freaking good at either. So now yeah. you get access to that uh, to that community of expertise who are trying to build their businesses while also helping you, and vice versa. You can help them and uh, grow their businesses. Yeah, no, cool. And, and it's it's about getting over that that mindset shift that says, "Hey, look, there's there's people out there that have those skills that you need to mm -hmm. kind of help with that business." So if you want to get it from business 1.0 to business 10.0, like look yep. at all those people and look at that knowledge base that you can really tap into and yeah totally, right on totally right love on. it right excellent on. yeah thanks so much rivers um how can we uh, get in touch with you how can people find you yeah so well my first thing is that uh, i've got two main places thank you for asking that question um my uh my bio if you want to call a little bit about me is at meetrivers.com m-e-e-t rivers.com and the rockstar mastermind is exactly that the rockstarmastermind.com the rockstarmastermind.com two great ways to get a hold of me if you want to learn more about the mastermind there's a button on the site that says i need more information rivers can we chat and i'll get on the uh, i'll get on skype with you or whatever to make that conversation happen cool yeah no thank you so much for your time rivers uh really appreciate it um and yeah, absolutely. And uh, thanks for watching. And just a quick recap, uh, I typically have these three core categories that I go through as part of my uh, digital leadership Facebook live events. Uh, the state of digital, where I talk specific digital strategy, ideas and insights happening right now and what you can kind of do uh, to help move yourself along in the digital space. Um, Uh, to discuss their strategies for success. And we talked a lot about masterminds. And then on Friday coming up, I have my uh, a strategy and marketing question and answer where I review tools and answer questions and that sort of thing. So cool. Uh, see you online. See you guys. Thanks, Doyle.